Good morning, good morning. Another beautiful Sunday morning. I'm Stephanie Ebbs, and we are going to be talking about operating in excellence. That's our topic for tea time this morning. So we'll see who pops on and we'll hop into it. Operate in excellence. Just trying to brew my tea here. Mm. So I'll let you guys know what tea I am drinking this morning. Uh, these are not ads, as I always say. These are just teas that I buy from other small businesses, and I'll let you guys know about them. Georgia Peaches, I've shared uh, Georgia Peaches before um, from Just At Honey Tea Company in Atlanta, Georgia. They have a couple of locations on the Beltline. I think they have one in um, Alpharetta. They used to have one um, downtown uh, near Grady. I think it uh, may have closed though. But yes, Georgia Peaches, I'll tell you what's in it. It's a black tea. It has... Does it say in here? Yes, ingredients, black tea, dried peaches, blackberry leaves, ginger, calendula and sunflower petals, papaya and apricot pieces. Like you can see the dried apricot pieces in here. Okay, so let's get into it. Operate in excellence. At its core, operate in excellence means to do your best, okay? That's what it means to do your best. Good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing? Talking about operating in excellence. To operate in excellence means to do your best. We are a uh, society of people who do a lot of things for a lot of people, but sometimes we don't always give 100%, not because we don't desire to give 100%, but because we have so many um, irons in the fire, as the saying goes, or because um, we're just so busy. But when we choose to uh, participate in an activity, it is vital, it is vital to give 100%, to show up and do the work. Good morning, good morning, how you doing? Let us know what you're drinking today. I know people, a couple of people popped on. I have, um, like I said, Georgia Peaches Black Tea, from just at a uh, honey tea company out of Atlanta. Um, to operate in excellence, to do your best. Um, I'll give you guys a quote from my kiddos um, after school teacher. Um, she says, do your best, not a hot mess. Okay. So do your best, not a hot mess. I laughed at first when I, when I um, heard her say that. But it's such a true statement. Do your best, not a hot mess. So if we're not given our best, we're not present in whatever activity. If it's an after school assignment that your kid's doing, if um, it's something on your job, you have to show up 100%. It's important. And if you're in a situation where you are no longer um, happy, you don't feel valued, you're not enjoying whatever activity or work that you're doing, maybe that's the reason that you're not operating in excellence, that there is more uh, mediocrity. My earrings all twisted up, guys. Let me see if I can fix it. There we go. Um, so we have to think about that. Why are we not giving 100%? Why are we not operating in excellence? There's usually a reason. Either we're too busy, we have, like I said, too many irons in the fire, we're not being mindful, present in the moment in that activity or that conversation, or it may be that we're, we're distracted or we're no longer fulfilled. So think about that. Are you fulfilled in the work that you're doing? If you're not, maybe that's why you're not operating in excellence. Mediocrity is not acceptable. Like... It's just not. We have to we have to show up. And if that means that we I give these talks, right? And look for the engagement. 
but they're for me too. Like I'm, I'm far from perfect. I have so much work and growth to do for my own self. So we're here, we're in it together. So you have to think about that. If you are in an environment and you are not giving 100%, why? Why is that? Are you tired? Do you need to take a vacation? Do you need some rest? Okay. If um, you are doing a new workout program and you're kind of like, well, you know, I'm distracted. I'm just here. I'm not really doing my workout. Why is that? Did you not sleep enough last night? Did you not fuel your body? Did you not you know, eat enough food? Do you need to change up your workout plan? Are you on the treadmill every day and now you're bored? Maybe take your run outside. Maybe hop on the elliptical, do an online class or group class in person. Things that can continue to allow you to do that workout that you want to do versus just being present at the gym and not completing the activity. Operate in excellence. When you operate in excellence, you know your why. It's important. Why do you do the work that you do? Why do you participate? Why do you show up? When you know your why, you come back to it. You reflect on it and it adds fuel to your energy, to your life, to your body, to your mindset. Knowing your why equals operating in excellence. They go hand in hand. Um, I have a scripture here I'm going to read to you guys. Uh, you may or may not be a person of faith, but I'm going to read it anyway, because as Tabitha Brown says, that's my business. It says, uh, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for man. Colossians 3.23. So whatever you do, you do for a greater being, whether it's a God, spirit, whatever you want to call it, something more than the people around you. Okay. You don't act in excellence. You don't um, do activities to please other people. Like if you did that, guess what? No one would ever be happy. There would, there would never be any joy. You would not be fulfilled, always working to make someone else happy. So guess what? You got to work to make yourself happy. And think about it. The work that you're doing, is it? can it be pleasing? Can it be seen as something positive for the world at large? That God will say, you know what? She's doing a good thing. She's making a difference in her community, in his community. Right? She's doing a good job at work. And if you're not uh, fulfilled, which I kind of touched on that a few moments ago, if you used to be in a, in a job, we'll just speak to jobs. If you used to be in a job that you loved, it could be education, it could be um, your business, um, maybe you work for a Fortune 500 company, you're in insurance, um, healthcare, etc. There's It can be anything. You went to that job with um, the thought of transformation, of being a part of something bigger, transforming people's lives, um, really pouring into the, the work environment to be challenged to grow. And um, maybe you had a stalemate. Maybe you're stagnant. What happened? Is the job boring? Do you not feel fulfilled? Are you not being challenged? Do you no longer enjoy your work environment? And if that's the case, that's okay. You know, it is okay if you do not enjoy your work environment. If you're not able to give 100% because you don't like what you're doing every day, it's time to make a change, right? So if you're going to work every day, you have your coffee or your tea, you have your bag packed and you get there and you do the bare minimum, the bare minimum. And this is day after day, okay? So everyone, we're normal, right? We're all normal people. Every day is not going to be the best day of your life every single day. That's normal. Like, okay, so this is for the complete opposite of that. So you go to work. You're just kind of flipping your thumbs, twiddling your thumbs, go to your meetings or what have you. Do the bare minimum. Okay. The next day, you don't really feel like getting out of bed. It's like, man, golly, I got to go to this job. I know I'm going to get paid on Friday, though, so if I don't go to work, I don't get paid, you know, so I'm going to go in. Same thing, bare minimum, bare minimum. Why is that? Is it your coworkers? You know, do you have a, a negative work environment? Is it toxic? You know, because 
That's the reality of the of the workplace we're in today. There are toxic work environments. So we have to think about that. What things are impacting your ability to operate in excellence? That's where that self-study svadhyaya comes in. That's that internal work. That's the part that's uncomfortable where we have to look at ourselves. As a people, and I say that all the time because it's true when you talk and you read and research, you know, we, we like to look externally and say, well, it's my boss or um, it's my coworkers, and it could very much be those people. Um, but before we look external, let's look internal at ourselves, okay? Look at ourselves. Why do I no longer enjoy work? Do I feel challenged? Am I learning? Am I growing, okay? Um, what, what things am I doing? Am I surrounding myself with negative people? I know those negative people, the, the negative people's energy seeping into my spirit and causing me to have a negative mindset in regards to my job. So let's start with self, okay? Look within and ask yourself, hmm, what do I need to do? Why do I no longer enjoy this work environment? Now, if you look at self and say what you can or cannot do, um, then we look at external. Okay, then we look around us. Is it your boss? Is he or she a micromanager? Um, is he or she giving you a lot of uh, work that you're unable to do? But coming back to self, you're, you, you're afraid to speak up and say, um, John, Dr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, what have you. Um, this is a heavy workload. I can't do it. I need support. They don't know if you don't tell them. So you can't operate in excellence. And if, and if you just genuinely do not like your job, you're not fulfilled, you've looked internal, you've looked external, you've even um, uh, looked at different um, just resources online that you think might be able to, to benefit you to operate in excellence, to do your best, to be able to do more, to give 100%. And you're like, you know what? I'm done. Like this... This is not for me. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You have to ask yourself, am I going to stay in this job or am I going to leave? Am I going to stay in this business, this environment? If I am, what can I do to improve myself? What can I do so that I'm not mediocre? I'm just barely getting along. You know, I'm just doing the bare minimum, twiddling my thumbs, you know, doing the meetings, having the very minimum requirement to keep the job. If all you desire to do is the minimum or really less than that, it's time to make a change, right? Maybe that means, like we talked about with the gym, you know, running outside versus running inside. Good morning, good morning, how you doing? I'm talking about operating in excellence. Maybe that means um, for, your, um, for your job site, you're looking for a new job internally or externally. You have to operate in excellence, okay? What are your gifts? What are your spiritual gifts? So think about that. What are you naturally good at that you love to do that you would do for free? Think about that. What did, I'm going to ask you guys, uh, Brittany, Austin, if you guys are still on. What are your gifts? Or what, what's your passion? What's like one thing, two, maybe you have five things that you love. And anytime you do it, um, like you feel fulfilled, joy, like radiates from you, the light, the energy, you're smiling. It doesn't feel like work. What would you do? What is that thing? What's your gift? I'll tell you guys while you are typing in the comments. Um, what would I do for free every day of my life if I could afford to do it? I would um, teach yoga beyond the asana, the all eight limbs of yoga. And um, 
I would um, like help people. At the core, I'm a, I'm a helper. So encouraging people, uplifting people, um, that's what I would do. Yes. So Austin, you say it's a tough one for you. You love helping people too. Awesome. Yeah, we're helpers. You say that, I think that's why I've done customer service for so long. Love helping people. You're a people person. I get that. I bet customer service is really difficult. Um, in nursing and healthcare, it's customer service based as well. People don't think about it, but it definitely is. It's, it's a, you're helping people. Um do you love customer service? Do you enjoy it? Or is it the helping people with whatever their circumstance is? Customer service, depending on what you do, can be really difficult, especially if you have a difficult client. What would you do for free? What are your gifts? Like what you're naturally talented at and it's like, yes, I love this. I'm helping people. Oh, it's both for you. It's both. That's awesome. Do you feel fulfilled in your work? Do you feel like you're operating in excellence that you give 100% most days of the week? Oh, wow, Austin. The difficult clients are the fun part. Go you. That's not. <laughs> I can't say I enjoy the difficult clients. Not so much. No. Sometimes in healthcare, I'll speak to that for a moment. Excuse me. You get berated, which, oh my gosh, you know, especially like with pain control. You don't ever give enough pain meds or it's just, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole, but when it comes to pain. But nursing healthcare can be challenging. Give me the easy grandmas or the easy patients. <laughs> I'm kidding. It becomes a challenge to find a way to help them. I agree. Let me know what you think about this. Is the challenge finding a way to help them? Or do you sometimes think that the challenge is them being willing to listen to the options that you have to help them? I think sometimes, and this is my personal opinion, that when someone has something in their mind, whether it's customer service based or not, no matter what you say, if it's not what they want to hear, then they're not happy. This goes beyond customer service. This is like in relationships, friendships, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Operate in excellence. We should give our time, our energy, um, into the things that we love, right? That's how we can operate in excellence, right? Things that we enjoy, you know, even on your work site, maybe you like your job, but it's not like your favorite thing or whatever. How can you change your mindset so that you are operating in excellence? Um, how can you add your gifts to uh, your job? Something that I've been doing with my yoga studio recently is asking my teachers, um, what are your gifts? Because gifts go be, are, are broad. Just because someone is a great yoga teacher um, doesn't mean that he or she it doesn't excel in another path, right? So you have to think about that. For me, I'm like, well, if you're good at art or um, you're really good at making memes or whatever, that's something that we can add to um, our workspace. That's something that you can do that you like to do and that you'll be compensated for. So that's something I think that um, anyone that has an organization, a business, your boss or whatever should do is ask you, what are your gifts? What do you like to do? What comes naturally to you? And how can that benefit the environment, the work, or the workspace? And how can that benefit you as an employee? So, you're able to, to hone on a craft that you're really good at, that benefits both you and the workspace. And that may be, even be an opportunity for you to transition into another field in that business. You to think about that. Operate in excellence. Use your gifts. What are you talented at? 
What do you love to do? Mediocrity is not acceptable. We all have off days, but every day is mediocre. Uh, Every day we're barely getting by. Something has to change. And I say this all the time because it's true. You have to act. You can think about it. You can think about it. You can talk about it. But you have to act. You can even plan out step by step what needs to be done so that you can operate in excellence, so that you can operate in your gifts, so that you can show up 100% for whatever you're doing. Okay? So you're mindful. You're in the moment. You're in that conversation. You're on that treadmill. You're running outside. You are... um, In your work environment, doing your job, you are fully present, giving 100%. If you're not doing that, internal reflection, external reflection. Do I want to stay in this environment? If I do, what do I need to do? How can I change? What um, new uh, measures can I take so that I can stay in this environment, right? Guess what? I don't want to stay in this environment. This is not for me. I don't want to continue to go to the gym. It's just not my jam, okay? I want to work out at home. It works better for my lifestyle. Great. Maybe vice versa. You can't work out at home because you have so many distractions. You need to go outside of your home. Think about that. Going back to your job. You talk to your boss. Things aren't changing. You've tried to um, speak and say what your gifts are. They're not letting you work in that environment to, to add those gifts so that you can support the business and find joy so that you can operate in excellence versus mediocrity. So you decide, I'm either going to stay and just continue on or I'm going to make a change, right? It's up to you. You do the plan. You do the work. You've got to act. Do not be a slave to fear. That's kind of a strong statement, but I've been thinking about that this last week. Um, Fear keeps us stuck. Fear causes us to operate in mediocrity. Fear. Fear is natural. But guess what? Don't let it stop you. Don't let it prevent you from being your best self, from operating in excellence, for pouring into your gifts, your passions, your purpose. Right? Think about small children. I use my kiddo all the time because I don't use her, but I give her as an example because I see it every day. Um, Children are fearless when they're born. They don't know fear. They want to try everything, do everything. And they're like, yes, I can. I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. But we as adults, we teach our kids fear. We do. Nobody's like, I don't teach my kids fear. Yes, you do. If you think about it, What words are you using? You know, that causes your your child to have fear. Or what actions are you saying that leads your child to have fear? I'll give you an example. My kiddo uh, this morning was working on her math. And I told her I was about to get on my spin bike. I said um, something to the effect of do the ones you can. I'll help you after, you know. And she's doing like plus sixes and it's a variation of like one plus six, 10 plus six, and and it's all out of order. So it's not like she can just go one plus six is seven, two plus six is eight, et cetera. Anywho, so she comes into uh, my Zen Den space and she's like, you're going to be mad at me. And I was like, mad at you? No. All I ask is that you do your best and I'm happy to help you. You use your number line. You have all the tools. If you need help, I'm happy to help you. But she was scared that I was going to be upset with her about not finishing her math sheet. So I have to look at me, self-reflection. What words have I used to cause her to be afraid? All I ask is do your best, not a hot mess. Operate in excellence. So you can even translate that to your own life. Do your best, not a hot mess. How are you showing up for yourself as an individual? How are you showing up for your kids, for your partners, your friends, your work environment? What words are you speaking over your own life? What words are you putting out into the universe that affects other people? Okay? If your words and actions are causing fear, you got to change that. Okay? You got to change that.
Be fearless. Don't get stuck. Don't be a slave to fear for yourself. And let's not let our kids that are coming up behind us, whether you have a, a, a an infant, a toddler, um, a teenager, young adult, you know, let's let that go. Yes, Austin, do your best, not a hot mess. That is a quote from Miss Cheryl from Kumon, my kids after school program, you know. Just do your best. And when you do your best, you operate in excellence. Yep. And when you're doing your best, that's more than enough, right? So you don't have to, you know, be upset with yourself. You don't have to be sad or angry or doubtful because you know you gave 100%. And that's all that you can do. When you've done that, your plate is clear. Wipe your brow. Pack up your bag and take it on home. Do your best. Um, oh, yeah, she does need to get that copy written. I need to tell Miss Cheryl to do that. I always give credit, y'all, for um, any quotes or statements um, that are not my own. I'll tell Miss Cheryl that um, this week when we see her online. Well, um, thank you guys for joining in. Next Sunday, 9 a.m., we will be here. Sipping on tea, chatting, connecting, growing, becoming our best selves. Transformation starts within. And as I always say, day one over one day. You guys have a great week. Feel free to send me a direct message. Any questions or thoughts you want to have. If you're catching the replay, comment below. And I'm here for you guys. Have a magnificent week. Operate in excellence. And as Miss Cheryl says, what does she say, Austin? Do your best. Not a hot mess. Bye, guys. Have a good day.